Hey everybody, welcome to Curtis Stage Video Tutorials. Today's tutorial we're going to talk about Adobe Illustrator and the pen tool. And this video is a beginning uh, tutorial that is going to talk about the basics of the pen tool. Now, some terms we need to learn uh, before we get started. Uh, here they are. We've got anchor points. We're going to talk about those. We're going to talk about line segments. We're going to talk about paths, Bezier curves and handles, the direct selection tool to edit anchor points, the convert anchor point tool, and then what do we draw with the pen tool? Of course, we can draw straight lines and we can draw curves. So the pen tool is the basic drawing tool within Illustrator to make vector drawings. and It's great for drawing logos and that kind of thing. All right, so let's get started. All right, so we have Illustrator open, and we're going to go and select the pen tool. Before we do, we're going to reveal some other tools with inside this pen tool. So you can see over in the toolbar, we have a couple different pen tools. We have the Curvature tool, which is new in the Creative Cloud, but then we have the pen tool here. This is the one we're going to talk about today. And you'll notice there's a few other tools inside the pen tool. So what I like to do is hit this little bar right here, and it will take and make this a panel here for me. And I can have the pad only to vertical or horizontal, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to have that vertical to give me some more space. Um, we're also going to turn on the grid here because we're going to start by drawing with a grid. So I'm going to go up to View and Show Grid. And you're going to see that we have a basic grid here, 5 by 5, right? so 5 squares by 5 squares. And my document is 5 by 5 inches. This will help you out. Now we're going to change this grid though. So let's go up here to Preferences, Guides and Grid, and we're going to go in here and we're going to change where we want the grid lines. I want them every half inch. So I'm going to put, instead of one inch, I'm going to put 0.5. And you'll see what happens when we do that. There we go. Now we've got little smaller boxes to work with here. This is going to be much easier. So what I want to do is I want to look up here on my options bar right up here towards the top of Illustrator and you're going to see I've got a fill color and a stroke. We don't need to have a fill color on right now so I'm going to click that and turn that off. We do want to have a stroke and I'm going to change the stroke width dimension to about three, three or four points. So what we're going to do here is we're going to draw let's say like a chess piece. So uh, let's draw a rook. So what we're going to do is we're going to count down three boxes. And we're going to learn how to draw our first straight line with the pen tool. So the pen tool is made up of anchor points. And between each anchor point is a segment. And when we connect all the anchor points and segments together, uh, which is closing all the segments, we create a path. So let's start doing that. First thing I want to do is I want to click here and make my first anchor point. So I'm not clicking and dragging. You'll notice I'm just clicking and making my first anchor point. I want to go on up two on my two blocks on my grid, and look at how it kind of locks to my grid lines right here. It's pretty nice. If I hold Shift down, I can also draw a perfectly straight line with the pen tool. Look, my pen's not even close. If I hold Shift and I kind of go straight up, see how it draws a straight line for me. And if I, it will also draw a perfect 45 degree angle as well by holding Shift if I just take my mouse and drag it over like I'm going to draw an angle. So I want to go straight up and I want to click and let go. That, that has two anchor points here. So you can see the first anchor point here and the second anchor point down there. And both those anchor points made a line segment. Now we're going to go over to, and again I could hold shift to get a straight line. My smart guides are on so it's also creating a straight line for me. And then I'm going to go down to, and you can see these green little lines that are popping out are, right, those are smart guides. So those are helping me get these lines to be straight. I'm going to now go over one block and up two, over two, and down two, and over one. This is helping me learn how to draw straight lines with an illustrator. And then down. And then we've got that. Now, I have what looks like the nice a top to a rook for a chess piece. Um, the problem here, of course, is that this is not a closed path. This is an open path. So I'm going to go down one and across all the way to the other side and then up. And when I 
get back to my very first anchor point, you're going to see that Illustrator will, Illustrator will tell me that I'm back to my first anchor point by putting that little circle there that tells me that I'm connecting this path and I've closed it. Perfect. So I have a closed path now. I'm going to go to my selection tool, my black arrow tool here, and when I click on my path, I can move this path now, or I can even change the colors, I can change the size, we'll get to all that in a minute. Let me fill this top of this with a color now. What's nice about this is I can fill this after the fact. So I can click on my on my path that I've created, and I can go up here and I can fill this with a color. It'll fill in. I can even change my stroke color after the fact if I want to as well. I'm going to leave that at black. But I can change my stroke after the fact. Right? So I can do all this stuff after I've drawn this. It's really great. Now if I want to draw the bottom part of this rook, I want to click off of this. I have it selected right now. Do you see how you can tell that it's selected when it's got this kind of bounding box around it? And I can see all the anchor points kind of lit up around the path. So the bounding box is on. So I'm going to click off of this. I'm going to go back to my pen tool right here. And I'm going to create another path. This path will go inside. If I look at my layers panel, I've got my first path right here. As soon as I create my second path, Right? It'll look like I'm trying to add to this path, but I'm not. I'm going to create my second path. I'm going to start right over here. I'm going to go one block, two blocks in and click and make my first anchor point. We're doing all straight lines right now. Then I'm going to go down towards the bottom of my document so that I'm one block up and one block over. Make my second anchor point. Then I'm going to go all the way across to the same spot on the other side and make my third anchor point. And of course then I want to go up here and I want to join back with this path right now. Now I'm not I'm actually not doing anything with that top path, but it looks like I am. And I do not have a closed path yet. It's an open this is an open shape. It looks like it's closed just because the color is filling in, but it's an open shape. I have to close this by going all the way across and meeting up with where I started. And you can see when I do that it will give me that little circle there next to the pen tool to show me that I have a closed path. So there I go. Now I'm going to go back to my selection tool and I want to select both these objects. I'm going to, there's two ways I can do it. I'm going to either drag select over both. And you can see that I have them both selected and I can move them around here. Black arrow tool is my move tool. Right? Or I can also select them both over here in my layers palette by selecting see these little circles right here next to each path. That one shows that I selected the bottom path and then this one shows that I've selected the top path. See that? What I want to do is select both of them so I can hold shift down and select them both. So there's two ways I can do that. I can do it right over in the layers panel or I can drag select over these two objects or I can click on one object hold shift and clicked on the other object. So there's actually three ways I can select them. So now what I'm going to do after I've selected them is I'm going to take this rook and I'm going to hold shift down. I'm going to grab one of the corners. I'm going to shrink this down. So both paths are going to now get smaller together. When I hold shift down, the reason why I did that, of course, is to keep the aspect ratio the same here. So when I hold shift, it keeps the aspect ratio. If I don't hold shift, just like in Photoshop, this is a free transform. Notice I didn't have to do Command T on here to make this happen. By default, the black arrow tool or the selection tool is a transform tool as well. I can even tilt, you know, I can even rotate, right? So I can scale and rotate this object. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this down. I'm going to make it smaller. All right, now what if I want to make a duplicate of this object? Again, this object is two paths combined into layer one. Well, I'm going to keep them both selected. I'm going to hold down Option on my keyboard and hover my mouse over this rook and I'm going to drag and drop and I will get an exact copy of that object. So again, once again, I'm going to hold my mouse over the object, hold down Option or Alt on my keyboard and simply click and drag. And then I've got a duplicate. So I'm going to click off of these objects and I'm going to talk about curve lines here with the pen tool. So what I want to do is I'm going to go back to the pen tool and I'm going to make my first point just like we did with the castle. I'm going to make it down here somewhere. I'm going to go up like I'm going to kind of draw a triangle 
but this time instead of clicking and making an anchor point and letting go of the mouse, I'm going to click and drag. And when I click and drag to the right, you'll notice that these little bars come out. This is called handles. These are bezier handles. And that curve that it's making is called a bezier curve. So when I drag to the right, the curve goes out to the left. And conversely, if I drag to the left, the curve goes out to the right. So I'm going to drag to the right and let go. And then, then I'm going to make another line. Now you'll see that as soon as I'm not clicking anything, I'm just dragging my mouse down my artboard here. And when I do that, it automatically is giving me a preview of what this is going to look like. So it wants to finish this curve for me. And I can if I just click. Now my next line is not going to be a curve. And you can tell that because I do not have a handle coming out on this anchor point. I just have a line coming out. So now I've got a straight line and a straight line. Let me do that again. That tells us something important about this whole curve situation. I know that I'm going to make a curve next because of this Bezier handle that's right up above this curve that I'm creating. So that Bezier handle right there is telling me that I'm creating this curve. To get rid of that Bezier handle, I can easily do that. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to Command Z and come up here and click and drag and let go. And then I'm going to switch to a different tool on my toolbar. I'm going to go to the Convert Anchor Point tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here on the edge, the very far end of this Bezier handle, and get rid of that handle on this side. You'll see that I still have the handle on this side. This is for this curve right here on the path. So this segment is curved because that handle. Now, when I go back to my anchor tool, right? so I've got my anchor here, and I go back here and I click and make another point, it's going to make a straight line. And then if I click and just click, single click, it's going to make a straight line. Now if my next click is a curve, right, either direction, right, if I, my next click to make a curve would be to click and drag. Okay, and then I can meet back up with my original anchor, and now I've got a closed path. So I'm going to go to my black arrow tool and delete that. And I can keep making circles by clicking. My first anchor point is never a click and drag. My first anchor point is just a click. And my second anchor point is a drag. And then my third could be a drag. And my fourth could be a drag. And my last one could connect up and be a drag. Now, Let's say that I want to edit these anchor points after I've created a path, either straight lines or curves or both. I'm going to go to the Direct Select tool, and this allows me, it's kind of a sub-selection, and it allows me to click on any anchor point and edit it after the fact. So I'm clicking on this top anchor point, look at how I can edit this after the fact. In fact, I can take these handles, and I can notice when I shrink this handle in, it's going to lessen the curve, and when I expand that handle to the right, it's going to bring the curve out. The curve follows the handle, really. If you want to just think about it, the curve kind of follows the handle. So if I take this handle over here and I bring it that way, right? the curve follows the handle. I take this one. It wasn't a curve. It was, it was kind of when I connect back up, it was connected to that straight line. Let's say I wanted to take this and convert this one to a curve. I can go to that Convert tool after the fact, and I can hold my mouse down right, and pull my handles, and now I've got a curve there as well. So this is a great tool to be able to use, this direct select tool, to go back and edit your anchor points after the fact. I can also use the keyboard and use my arrow tools on the keyboard to incrementally move anchor points. So you can see that I'm clicked on this anchor point right here, and if I use my arrow up tool, I can move this so I can get really, really fine-tuned precision on where I want to move objects and where I want their anchor points to move. Now let's say I wanted to add or subtract an anchor point along a path. I can do that right over here with my little anchor point tool. Right? I'm going to add anchor point right here. It's a pen tool with a plus. And anywhere on this path, I can click and add anchor points. So that's really nice to be able to do. And likewise, I can take the delete anchor point tool right here and I can delete any anchor points like that. All I have to do is click on them, you'll see the little minus pop out and you can delete anchor points. You can get back to almost nothing down here. Now again 
what's nice is I go to my black arrow tool and I can move and expand so I can hold shift down and make this bigger I could it's a free form transform tool so I can expand it without holding shift down I can rotate this right so if I hover my mouse towards the corners I can rotate so that's really nice with my direct select tool is how I get in and edit the individual anchors now I want you to look right here because on the creative cloud um, we've got a new little option right here. It's this little circle that pops up right next to this anchor point. This allows me to curve this anchor point almost perfectly like that. These don't have that because they're already curved. So let me do that again with some straight lines. So I'm going to go here, delete this object, and I'm going to go grab my anchor point tool. I'm going to make a triangle here or something like that. So I'm going to go here and make a triangle, connect it all the way back up. And now when I get my direct select tool, you'll see that any anchor point that I'm clicked on, you're going to see that little, little guy right there. And this allows me to curve that corner. And if I click on this anchor, I can pull this in and look at how it allows me to curve that corner. This is great when you're designing logos and you want to have a really perfect shape here. And of course, I could click on any one of these new anchor points and edit its Bezier handle like so. And then I just screwed that thing up, of course, because it was perfect before. So again, if I click on this anchor point, you can see how I can now pull this in. I can keep pulling it in, and it will curve that. And I can pull it back, push it back out, and it will push it out. So it's a really handy tool here. Right? Once I've got this here, I can always go back and re-edit it by clicking any one of the anchor points along the path right in that corner. It could be either one of these, and it will edit it and I can go back and edit any one of those points. So really nice. So the basics of the pen tool, pretty easy when you get started. You got to, it takes lots of practice to kind of get good at it, but what you want to do is you want to draw a lot of straight lines and curved lines and give yourself a challenge uh, creating objects. And then once you get the hang of how the Bezier curves get made, uh, it'll make your life a lot easier to use the pen tool to create more complex objects when you're doing logo work or typography. All right, so that is an Illustrator tutorial. Once again, thanks for watching Curtis Stage Video Tutorials. We'll talk to you soon.